Into Larry now, eastward they go 200 miles to the Long Canal at Welland, skirting Niagara River and the famous falls. They hold a steady seven knot down Lake Erie, tracing a white wake along well-traveled shipping lanes. At Port Colburn, they enter the Welland Canal, a 25-mile channel cut by Canadian engineers past the rapids and cataracts of Niagara in Lake Ontario. Pent-up waters of four inland seas foaming down Niagara River and the thundering falls drop 300 feet into the last and smallest of the lakes. But through the towering locks of Welland Canal, bigger than any at Panama, the ships pass down from Erie to Ontario in seven easy stages. They follow the straight channel through historic Ontario farmlands through the steel and chemical plants of busy Welland Town, where 12 million tons of shipping passes each season. Grain from the prairies, automobiles from Windsor, crushed rock and fuel oil, head down the canal towards eastern Canada and the long channel of the St. Lawrence River to the Atlantic. From the Lake Ontario side, ships approach the massive twin flight locks at Thorold, which will lift them 140 feet towards the upper levels of the canal. The lock gates swing shut behind a canaller headed for the upper lakes hill threading through the farmlands. Meantime, at the lower end of the canal, water in Lake Ontario. The biggest lake-built city in Canada is Toronto third greatest port in the Dominion. Crowded freight yards and factories mark the capital of Ontario, the heart of industrial Canada. In the growth of the farmlands around her, in the movement of settlers up the lakes to the west, Toronto became a great port. Ontario grew with the growing west, shipping her manufacturers and machines up the lakes to the new lands and receiving their grain and raw stuffs in return. Here along the crowded docks is the sign of can greatness in industry. Behind the clatter winches and the ceaseless movement of freight is the the wealth of the Canadian lands and harvests. Here is the capital that became fifth world trader, rich in metals, grain, and timber. A vigorous nation, quick to exploit her riches, to surge ahead in world commerce, and take her place among the industrial peoples of the future. Her holds emptied, the freighter promptly takes on new cargo, saving precious time for another trip up the lakes before winter comes and freezes shipping to a standstill. Down the St. Lawrence to the sea. For the St. Lawrence links the five lakes Atlantic, and ocean-going freighters will steam all the way down the future seaway to mid-continent. Around these great lakes, and forests and new land has built it, the hardihood of settlers and the skill of engineers. Into the lake boats, dockers load the wealth of a whole continent. Eight months every year, the long ships head out across a broad seaway between friendly nations to carry all the crops and cargoes they can before the season ends. Soon the cold winds will come, the ice and the white silence of winter. But with the first open water, 
the ships will leave harbor, and a swift rush of life will surge again across the Great Lakes of North America.